Hello and welcome once again to The Bike Show. And what an interesting episode we have lined up for you this week. Without any further build up, let's cross over to Don, who is with a very special guest. Okay, Heskel, first question. What are you doing in South Africa? Yeah, first of all, we made some holiday here and uh, met our all our good friends and enjoy the warm weather. We have uh, winter in Switzerland and so we escape a little bit the cold and the COVID lockdowns. <laughs> I used to watch you in the 90s on TV. You were you were good. You were damn good. Yeah, we did uh, some Grand Prix, uh, uh, 250 and 500 and uh, that's uh, of course on a good, was on a good level and we had, we had a good fun and good time, yes. Now I want to know is how does a racer <coughs> go from professional racing to actually building motorcycles? Yeah, we had a small team um, with six, seven people and um, as a Swiss rider you're not really um, attractive for a factory rider because the market behind is quite small and um, so it was for us impossible to get to factory bikes so we have to build them by ourselves. So we built first uh, our own cylinders and exhaust uh, carburetors. Uh, finally o almost the whole engine and uh, installed the first engine dyno, the first CNC machines to make the parts and then when I stopped racing is more or less a, a smooth transit into business we start to selling uh, racing parts to our former competitors and of course we had the, all the, um, the contacts to the, the, the motorcycle factories and uh, had immediately entries with our clutch system in there and so on and so on. Yeah. You also did frames. I believe you even won a championship with one of your frames with a certain quite famous rider. No, we don't do frames. We do we do motorcycles. <laughs> uh, a, this is a little bit the problem of the Moto2 class, you know, the, because you need to use that uh, standard engine from the series. Uh, everybody thinks you just need to make a frame, but you need to make a motorcycle. You need to make aerodynamics, cooling system, throttle cable, wiring loom everything you know and then uh, finally you are forced to install this kind of um, production engine which i don't really like too much uh, and then moto 2 gives you kind of um, an image as a as a frame builder but it's not the frame you build motorcycles and also we did um, we did some other motor race motorcycles uh, kawasaki moto gp and some other stuff and um, the frame is just a part of it, you know, it's a thousand parts in a motorcycle and one of them is the frame. You know, so. Speaking of motorcycles, I mean, we, we can see very clearly behind us that you do in fact build motorcycles. Uh, what, what was the idea behind building this, the 500? Yeah, like I said, I, I was riding uh, 500 Grand Prix in 98 uh, and uh, this, is, this is the best experience you ever can have in two-stroke 500 because they're so light and so powerful and it's really something to you need to have experience and then you understand and um, there were never V4 bikes for sale because the Japanese factory bikes always goes back to Japan and um, for many people it was always a dream to have a, a V4 um, a factory machine but also the um, historic bikes now they've out from this championship from that time uh, you cannot really use it because there is no spare parts around you know so we had a once in the evening a stupid idea and said, okay, let's, let's build a, a, v, a 500V4 because we had some parts laying around like a cylinder and exhaust uh, unit from, from, from the 500 project we did working before. We have uh, for us a chassis to build a chassis and stuff. Yeah, I think let's, let's build an engine and make, make, a, make a 500 pack. But then it was much, much more. It was really a complete development from, from A to B. You know, you need to finally make a gearbox and the whole the whole all the parts yes yeah this is two stroke fuel injector now fuel injecting two strokes was always something very tricky yet you managed to get a rod that must have been something yeah it was not that that tricky because we have a lot of experience in this field um make make injection and uh, mapping for many many different engines and uh, it was just i think a good cooperation with, with our engineers together and then we had it quite quickly on ongoing. How involved are you in the development of this? I'm sure you've got engineers and all sorts of people. How hands-on are you? Yeah, let's say on, on this bag I did quite a lot myself. So I designed the chassis swing on the whole aerodynamics, ergonomics I did myself. Um, engine um, part of it, the layout, but then into the details this was done by the by my engineers. Uh, they're strong in make the calculation for the 
balancing of the crankshaft and all these sort of things. Um, and then development again uh, was quite deeply involved. Uh, but I must also say it's, it's kind of a hobby, you know. So it's, we, we don't uh, spend full time on it. We really, uh, when we had time beside, we we, did, we working on the dyno, make make all the exhaust development and so on and so on. But um, therefore, it also took a few years to, to build these bikes. Normally, we can do it in half a year to build such a bike from white piece of paper till, till it's finished. But this, this bike, we took about three, three, four years because we really look to it more or less uh, more uh, as a hobby you know so yeah. yeah i'm gonna say you're like you're a bit like elon musk you know who builds tesla but better because you build motorbikes <laughs> i know this is a different number but um you know we are involved in in building racing motorcycles since uh, since many many years and um, for instance we did the kawasaki motor gp bike yes. uh, from 2003 to 2007 and there was also um the mahindra motor 3 which uh, brad binder uh, had his first podium in, in the in the uh, Saxon Ring Grand Prix. Uh, that was my machine, uh, and uh, that makes me also proud to be part of uh, part of that story. You know. The 500 behind us. I mean, <clears throat> the last bikes we sort of saw racing on TV was kind of. I think it was 2001. Valentino Rossi won that year. How close is this to those machines that we saw then? Let's say in quite close let's say from weight and performance is about very similar we have much better torque today much better torque uh, curve and uh, of course the chassis is much much more modern so i think uh, with this bike uh, Valentino rossi would have a quite an easy game to win the championship um when i see that the development was going into the grand prix chassis in the last 10 years so this is all in this bike you still got the factory, it's still open, you, you, people can still buy these, is that right? Yeah, we always uh, get a few orders and then we build the, the next batch, five, six machines, what we uh, just at the moment doing, you know, we have another uh, few orders together and we're building now machines that should be ready in, in two, three months. Okay. And if somebody wants to buy one, how would they go about doing it? Yeah, they just need to contact us and then we work out the details of the contract, down payment, and then um, it's a hundred... Uh, 10,000 under 12,000 euro means it's about uh, 195 million rand. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. The president is giving a speech tonight, so it might be more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's really something. But when you when you look back, the old factory machines on this level, you know, with this old fully machine and titanium and uh, finest parts, that they cost a million that time. So it's actually quite cheap. What we're talking about, you know. It costs less than a supercar. This is way more special than a supercar. Yeah, it also is um, something which also keeps the value. You know, this you can use this bike. You can go around. Uh, uh, there is parts available. You can rebuild it. You even yeah. are allowed to crash it. We <laughs> have some spare parts <laughs> available and make the bike nice afterwards again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Eskel, for joining us. Uh, we're, well, we're really privileged to have you not only in South Africa, but have you with your machine here at Red Star today. Yeah, it's a very difficult track, I must say. Um, there's corner by corner by corner, and you don't have any overview because it's all on the same altitude level. So it's, um, it will take me a few laps to find out where it goes along. You know? <laughs> Welcome back. Before the break, Don introduced us to one of the most interesting, talented characters to ever grace a Grand Prix paddock. Now he's going to introduce us to his creation, the Suter MMX 500. Am I the biggest guy that's ever ridden one of these? Let's go first gear. I think so. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, listen to that. <laughs> this is a two million rand motorcycle. I'm riding a two million rand motorcycle. This was it. Living my dream. With all that happening, I um, kind of forgot I was supposed to rev it when leaving pit lane. Oh, f With all the elegance and dignity the bike show could muster, Eskel Suter himself had to run out and help restart it. Right, let's try that again. Oh, there we go. 
I grew up in awe watching 500cc Grand Prix bikes. To be riding one is certainly a dream come true. There are some barriers though. This is the most expensive bike I've ever ridden and I haven't been on track for nearly six months. What better way to dust off the cobwebs than on the most expensive bike I've ever ridden while the owner is watching. Okay, here we go so far. Getting a bit warmed up. We're coming down to the straight now. Let's open it up, see what she's got. Oh! 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 Oh, oh, oh bloody hell brakes! <laughs> bloody hell brakes! Holy cow! What the hell is that? That's 195 horsepower! I've ridden 195 horsepower! This is not this is like a billion! Whoa! <laughs> what makes the difference is the way the two-stroke feels. A four-stroke will stroke your ego and wipe your brow as it gradually gives you a push. A two-stroke puts on a giant steel cap work boot and gives you a good kicking. Flipping this way, I'm so scared of this throttle. I'm so scared of everything. But it's not just the motor that makes the difference. Here's the thing. This thing weighs 126 kilograms. Your super bike weighs almost 100 kilograms more. It's half the weight. Of an adventure bike. But then again, the motor does help. There we go again. Then it's time to hit the anchors. Whoa, these brakes! There's not even one finger breaking. It just stops. It's like I was doing 200 back there. Suddenly I pull the brakes and then I do four. The performance of the Suta is incredible, but what is perhaps even more so is how good it feels. Limited run bikes by specialist manufacturers are usually praiseworthy, but if we're honest, tend to feel a bit rough and sort of shed made. Whereas this bike could have left the stringent factories of any of the top Japanese manufacturers, it feels that good. Probably. I got me used to this now. It's actually rather smooth. Most of all, it's a 500 two stroke Grand Prix bike. I've met my childhood hero, and it was better than anything my overactive imagination could ever dream of. That was mega. That was mega. Jesus, like. I can't get over this thing. <laughs> I've never ridden anything like that before in my life. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm a bit tired, I'm not going to admit. I'm going to admit. <laughs> I am so jealous right now. It, it actually physically hurts. What an amazing opportunity. And... Even if it was only three laps, it's something that Don will remember for the rest of his life. To give you a bit more insight into what it's like riding a 500 two-stroke, and the Suta 500 in particular, I'm going to show you a bit of corporate Suta footage now. Don't groan and switch channels because you'll want to hear what these two mega-legends of Grand Prix racing have to say on the matter. So, let's cross over to Freddie Spencer and Wayne Gardner. Two stroke, there's a purity to watch in them. They're very unique in how the visual, the visual aspect of it, and the way they respond under acceleration, the sound, the smell, all those things. And, and as human beings, that's what we respond to, what we see, what we sense, and what we feel. And the two stroke bikes give you all of that. And so people, when they watch it, they, they get goosebumps and they get a smile. You know, the Suga 500 is just an incredible bike. A couple of things I noticed right away is the nice feel of the chassis and the, the power and the torque of the engine. And the fact that it's fuel injected gives it a preciseness that brings it into the modern era of engine response. It's got a lot of acceleration. You're constantly moving over the bike to try and control it and get your weight over the front and on the back and 
it's a huge exercise in itself to be able to ride one. It's just got this rawness about it that's exciting and very, very sexy. The ultimate recommendation for the ultimate track day bike and at a smidgen under two million rand, an absolute bargain. I'd have one in a heartbeat if I, well, if I wasn't a pauper journalist.